The insanity around the hype in the silver market is about to ramp up in a big way. I'm going to tell you about what to look out for in this video as we explore. <laughs> The craziness is beginning. We're going to see more of it, even if we continue to see pullbacks in silver's price. There's enough out there now that there are some prognosticators that will take advantage of this and try to hype it up big time to get you to buy for one reason or another, or just maybe to get attention. I want to introduce you to Summit Metals, who is a sponsor of this channel, who wants you to buy responsibly. That's right. They do not want you to buy out of fear or based off of any crazy analysis that's out there. They're really good people. They have really great prices. And uh, you can scan the QR code here or go to summitmetals.com. They do have flash deals. And so check out Summit Metals. In the end, it's really about having a balanced and a, uh, an understanding of what silver is and has been for thousands of years. Once you understand that, silver sells itself. But until then, we are seeing massive and craziness starting to come out with pieces that I'm about to share, like what I'm about to share with you right now. This first piece is an absolute clown show of a ridiculous uh, prediction. And actually, if for the uninitiated, and uh, it would be dangerous to follow this advice, uh, because what they're saying is that $50 silver is just days or weeks away, not months and of course, people get more emboldened as the price continues to go up. Now, as I record this video, we've seen a fairly big pullback, but it's still well above the resistance uh, that we had uh, been talking about on this channel for quite some time. Notwithstanding, uh, even if silver's price were to take a, a 180 and move right back up to where it was and surpass $35 an ounce, I think it's actually unhelpful to make these unsolicited uh, uh, price predictions with really no merit or basis in any kind of reality, just twisting and turning technical analysis and charts to make a case for something. Uh, this has uh, been reported on King World News about what uh, has happened in the past and, and how quickly it could go back up based off of what's happened in the past. It talks about 1980 and 2011. I'm going to give you kind of a of a surmise what the what they're saying here. Gold is being driven higher by a variety of factors, but it boils down to supply and demand. The basic principle of all economic activity, the demand for the dollar around the globe is falling and gold is rising because it is a proven safe haven to protect your purchasing power. So with silver, but it has a lot of catching up to do, and that's right. And in the in the long run, supply and demand do make uh, make the ultimate case for why prices go up. But the thing is, is that there's there's a derivatives market out there too. Of course, many of these same people that are predicting that silver is going to reach a crazy high like $50 again anytime soon are the same people that think, well, it's being suppressed. So it didn't happen because it's being suppressed. So they blame the big bankers and they blame, blame everybody else except for the fact that they were wrong. Uh, and with the understanding that that stuff is, is in place, the mere existence of the derivative markets is in and of itself a manipulative uh, type of uh, influence. Now, silver is obviously far off of its $50 record high, reached in 1980 and again in 2011 in nominal dollars. But uh, the author here is expecting a new record high soon. And uh, he's looking at the chart and, and what he calls a bear trap and and the shoulders and everything and again but you know technical analysis is all fine and good when you look at the patterns of the past to make predictions of the future until uh, until the silver price is essentially punched in the face and that happens quite frequently uh and if nobody sees it coming and it could be any number of different reasons why the silver's price could fall dramatically um and i don't think anybody really saw what happened even just in the recent pullback as to why a strong dollar and higher bond yields just kind of sprouted up like that. But that's how the market works. It's, it's really irrational. The only thing more irrational than the silver market itself is prognostications like these that uh, want to tell you that within days or weeks, silver is going to get 50 to $50 an ounce. But he says here that, uh, that what happened in 2020 is kind of a, uh, uh, 
a pre precursor as to what could happen, you know, here in the next couple of weeks. But the thing is, is 2020 was a very different situation than what we're seeing right now. Very different. There's a potential for a repeat because silver is being relentlessly accumulated by strong hands, resulting in this huge multi-year base of support. Silver is now breaking out from the base as well as a reverse head and shoulders pattern, as he talked about here. Silver has chewed through minor resistance at $32 an ounce, a level first reached this past May. Silver is now set up for a rocket higher like it did in 2020 for one all-important reason, the demand for physical metal is gaining the upper hand over the short sellers and the paper market attempting to tamp down the price. Inevitably, physical trumps paper because it's a real thing that's more valuable and useful than just a promise to deliver a real thing at some future date. And I agree with that. However, that does not necessarily mean it's going to happen anytime soon. Now, here is his logic about what's going to be coming. And, you know, the, the headline, the subheadline here is $100 silver in sight. Uh, so here's what he sees unfolding for the precious metals as we move towards the end of the year. Gold will continue climbing to make new records, but silver is about to catch up with its new records too. It looks to him like $50 silver is just days, weeks away, not months. And of course, you know, the thing is, is uh, there are 52 weeks in a month. So maybe he's saying in a year. I don't know. You can try to use semantics. I mean, he says, well, it's been months now uh, and it's not seen there. Well, yeah, but it's a, it's only uh, eight weeks, you know? I mean, it's, it's crazy how they kind of eat their way around this. But anyways, days, weeks away, uh, to normal measure that we're talking about, you know, less than two months, uh, he's saying it's going to occur. Once $50 is hurdled, decades of base building and driven by unstoppable demand for physical silver will launch silver into a major bull market, taking its, uh, on it to a fairly towards fair value. In a world of fiat currency, you can't use dollars or any other currency to measure a fair value. We can't predict whether central banks will inflate or deflate, so we need to use gold as a standard of measure. Um, and of course, you really can't compare silver to gold in many ways, especially nowadays. Look at the gold to silver ratio. It's crazy high. But in a world of fiat currency, uh, uh, you know, the, or any other currency that's out there, it's kind of hard to measure. So the fair value of a gold to silver ratio under 30 and probably close to the historic ratio of 16 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold, which, by the way, was when they fixed the ratio. It had nothing to do with the supply demand of the metals or the mining ratio or anything like that. If gold does reach his uh, near-term target of $3,000, and that's a big if, but we're thinking about the ratio falls to 30 like it did in 2011. But the thing is that that's really a big leap to say that it's going to fall like that like it did in 2011. We're not in 2011 anymore. And by the way, I think it bottomed out at 32 to 1, but that's uh, that's just a, a side note there. Um, and... So that's 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 what he's saying there. I don't know. There's really not much logic behind this other than saying that he should take action immediately in a royalty company, a metal royalty company. Um, so I think that gives us some ideas what the motivation is. But he left a lot out here in this piece. As they're just saying, well, physical demand is going to be crazy. The thing is, um, you go to any bullion dealer, there's plenty of this around. There's a whole lot of silver around. Uh, for the taking and and really the premiums aren't that bad on them yet um and uh people are selling a lot of silver too at these higher prices there's a whole lot of selling not as much buying happening there's a lot he left out that is working against silver as it is for it um and that's coming from somebody who's bullish on silver i am still bullish on silver i still think silver will hit 35 dollars an ounce before the end of the year and by the way for the for those of you going to comment in this video say well it already has hit 35 dollars sal no it hasn't it has not hit 35 dollars yet because you're looking at bullion dealer prices you should be looking at uh, the uh, the precious metal prices from kitco or another agency around kitco that um uh, or the underlying trading view, um, and uh, th that, that's the actual spot price market, not not actual kit, not not the bullion dealer prices. They use the futures prices, or a combination of the future prices and spot prices. They don't actually use spot price. And that's what you should be using. So that's uh, but m make no mistake though, you are going to see more 
uh, analysis like this, saying that it's just a matter of time. People are going to capitalize for whatever motivation they may have to say that silver is going to skyrocket to get you to buy a stock or whatever or or to go to a bullion dealer to get it. Um, and uh, that's something you'll never see this channel. And many of us in the community will not do that either, by the way. I think most of the content creators in this community are responsible. But uh, it just it's we cannot get the message out there enough that silver sells itself no matter what the price is. And we have to we cannot operate in a world of fear with regards to buying, holding or selling our precious metals. And silver especially is, is really sensitive to this because of the premiums we pay for them and what we lose when we go to sell them. Especially nowadays, if you go to sell your silver, you're going to get below spot because a lot of people are selling. Billion dealers are not paying as much as they had in the past. And uh, that's the, the market we live in now. Um, so in reality, the real price of silver in the end boils down to what you can get for it when you go to sell it. That's the price that matters the most. But in the, in the meantime and in the interim, and given the economic situation and uncertainty that we find ourselves in, holding it as a protection, as an insurance policy against economic instability is priceless. Its value far extends beyond its price. So there you have it. A little bit of perspective for you. I hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.